Within that division, oh, and within that division is the COVID-19 recovery program. And within that uh, program is the indoor air quality and ventilation team. Um, and at this time, I would like to introduce three of our um, technical assistance um, investigator that will be presenting today. So the first one will be with Rhoda, Rhoda Mohammed, and then Daniel Huang, and then Jenna Trung. Okay, next, next screen. So the agenda is we'll do an overview and objective of what our, our team does. Uh, and mainly our team will you know, provide indoor air quality education and provide technical assistance to you so that you can um, improve and reduce the transmission of COVID-19 in your workplace. And we'll talk about why it's important, how does it work, how can we improve it, and various sector considerations we look at. And, um, and then we'll provide some resources uh, regarding indoor air quality. Next slide. So today's objective is um, how to have awareness of the importance of healthy indoor air, uh, understanding natural ventilation, local exhaust, and me mechanical ventilation, and how they affect the airflow in your building or your spaces. Um, so for those who are attending the webinar for the first time for each business, um, you will receive a free HEPA air cleaner. And I will we will provide more details at the end of the presentation on how to receive your, your free HEPA air cleaner. And then we'll also talk about how you may be eligible for additional free HEPA air cleaner. And if you could um, hold all your questions to the end of the presentation and, and we'll get to all those questions that you have. But in the meantime, and this is the link to get your to your free HEPA air cleaner. It's our intake form. And so um, if you could go on to the link, um, Jenna, if you can click on that and show them what the intake looks like. So we'll, we'll set this into the chat box. So this is the information that we'll, that we'll want you to complete when you complete the intake form. We're looking for the name of your business or contact person. Um, so it's really quick. It's, you know, you, you, you can probably complete that within a few minutes, um, but it's information that we can use and then we'll send you an email uh, regarding when and where to pick up your free HEPA air cleaner. So we'll put that in the chat so that you know how to get to that intake form. Okay. Yeah, and also if you could um, remember on the box 12 there is to put down that you attended the webinar on 12-9. That way we know that you are to receive a free HEPA air cleaner. Okay, next slide. So the first presenter will be Rhoda Mohammed, and she'll talk about why is indoor air quality very important. Rhoda, you're on next. Hello everybody, I'm Rhoda Mohammed. I will talk about why is indoor air quality important. The average person in America spend this 80% of their time indoors. And good indoor air quality can help us reduce the airborne transmission of COVID-19 and other viruses. And it's important with the new viruses like Omicron that we don't know much about it. Uh, so if you look at this picture, the Delta variant spreads easily than previous variants. It may cause more than two times as many infections. So this, this is the original COVID. Um, so if you have the COVID-19, it will, you can affect two people at the same time. But the Delta variant, you can affect five or more people at the same time. And the Omicron virus, we don't know much about it yet. Next slide, please. So multiple layers improve success. The Swiss cheese respiratory pandemic defense organi organizes that no single intervention is perfect. 
at preventing the spread of coronavirus because if you look at it, each layer has holes. So multiple layers of protection will block the spread of COVID-19. No one, no one layer is perfect because each layer you can see it has holes. So if these holes, when they align, the risk of infection increases. But when several layers combine it, for example, social distancing, wearing masks, hand washing, government messaging, will significantly reduce the overall risk. And when we get vaccinated, we are adding one more protective layer. So to get protected from COVID-19, we need to do all these protective layers and not only one of them. You can say I get vaccinated and I'm not going all the other layers. That will not protect you. Even though if we, even if we do all these layers, still you can see there is two holes that, that means you have the chance still to get the virus, even though you did all these layers of protection. Next slide, please. How do viral particles spread? If you have COVID-19, this is how much droplets and particles that contain COVID-19 you can produce when you talk or breathe or cough. These droplets and particles can be inherited by other people who are healthy, or it might land on their eyes or noses. And sometimes they may contaminate surfaces that other people may touch. People who are closer than six feet from the infected person or most likely, are most likely the one who are getting the, the COVID. Next slide, please. Viral particles in the air. Think if you are in a place or in a room with other people, think every person as a potential source of the virus. Particles come out from our mouths and nose and circulate as a droplets or particles in the air. So we are trying to prevent particles from being in the air, like wearing masks. If you wear masks, you can prevent like 20 person or more to go into the air. And we can dilute the air by opening the window and doors. So when you put more fresh air in the space, you are diluting the air. So concentration of the air particles that is circulating in the air will be less. Also, we can use filtration. If you filter and use like HEPA air purifier, that also will clean the air. Next slide, please. If we look at this picture, this person has COVID-19, for example. So when that person breathes or talks or coughs, this is how much particles or droplets that person is producing. And the other person that's close to the person is not wearing masks, and the person who is who's infected with the virus is not wearing masks. So this person will, like he has high chances to get the um, COVID because all, all these particles, he might inhale all these particles. But if you go to the person who has, who is little far away, you can see the particles that are circulating in the air are getting less and the big ones are going down. So this person has less chances than this one to get the COVID. And that's, that picture is showing us when you wear masks, that mask will prevent you to produce all these particles to the air. And also if this person is wearing masks, it will also, the mask will also protect that person to inhale all these particles. Next slide, please. Prevent particles from being in the air. So if you wear masks, masks contain is like 20 to 60 percent of droplets coming from the mouth or your nose when you cough or sneeze or talk. So limit time using a room or space if you can. So COVID and other viruses are airborne respiratory viruses that we get infected from inhaling a large enough dose particles, but if you wear masks, it can control that. 
And also when you wear masks, any droplets or particles you produce do not become circulated in the air. So limit the time you are in, the, in a room because this will decrease the number of particles that will circulate in the space. So if you can go outside for a short period of time and let the room flush by opening the door and windows and turning the extreme. Okay. You are on mute, Rhoda. Oh my God, I don't know what happened. So prevent the virus from being in the in air. So masks can contain 20 to or 60% of the droplets coming from the mouth and noses. So COVID and other viruses are airborne respiratory viruses that we get infected by inhaling a large number of the particles. But you, if, you, if you wear masks, you can prevent that and you can stop the particles to circulate in the air. So also you can limit the time people are being in a room or in space because this will decrease the number of particles that will accumulate in the space due to, to the people being in there. So if you can go outside or in a short period of time to let the room flush by opening the door and windows and also turning the and happy air purifier if you have one that will give the room to, uh, the chance to change the air. And now Daniel will present the ventilation and filtration. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel. Um, I'm here to present the ventilation filtration part of this presentation. So there's two ways to help your indoor, help, indoor facility, which be a restaurant, office, or house would be ventilation or filtration. So ventilation is a term to just bring in fresh air, diluting, or infiltration is capturing and removing particles in the air. Okay. Next slide, please. So this is natural ventilation. So natural ventilation, if the weather permits, you can bring as much safe, fresh air as possible by opening doors and windows and Okay. Fans in the windows to blow potentially contaminated air out and pull new air through the doors, through windows and doors. Interestingly, okay. And here's one thing about airborne transmission. Um, as you can see here, that the individual with COVID-19, um, the particulars goes a little bit animated. As you see, as it goes to the window, you see particles being diluted. So having the windows open help bring the ventilation in your indoor facility. So even having a small crack actually helps out a lot for your facility. And you can click on this link and fill that out for your free habit or free fire. This link, please. And then here's another part, which is mechanical ventilation. So inside your house, there's local exhaust, bathrooms, and kitchen hoods that should be running whenever you are occupied in the building. Um, this helps helps the air indoor being pushed out and also brings in air inside as well. So at the same time, so it brings in fresh indoor air outside and pushes air out, being recirculated. And if you have an HVAC system in your building, it's the most reliable way compared to one or more handlers that pulls air from the outside building and circulate the air through the building. Outside, outside air intake is more important for diluting inside the air. The reason why is that um, the fresh outdoor indoor air helps dilute the indoor air and pushes it out, uh, the, the mechanical ventilation, which is being filtering, filtering, recirculating the air, which is important to remove the particles in the air. And it's really important that you want to maintain the system. So clean, replacing the filters, and make sure they are properly seated is one of the best ways. Okay, and this is an illustration of how ventilation works. 
So you can see here in the arrow, the fresh indoor air comes in through the HVAC system and forces throughout, and that comes through our air outlets, which would be your supply. And in your facility, there can be return air grills that takes the air indoor and pushes all the way out from the air handling it out. And here is a demonstration where indoor air was there, our HEPA air purifier. So you can see, it. well, oh gosh, what's going on here? Okay. So the particles, as the individual who's affected with COVID 19, um, highly spread, but as you see, it get closer to the air purifier, the particles get sucked into the air purifier, and these three filters help dilute the particles, which lowers the risk of transmission. So where do you want to start? You want to see if your air suppliers are blocked. Um, usually there's a little adjustable block damper right there. Um, if your air, return air grills are dirty, um, usually I would vacuum it. It's so much easier. Um, or you would actually contact your landlord or HVAC specialist to see what they can do for that. Next slide, please. All right, Daniel, and I'll take it from here. Okay. Um, so continuing on. On that theme, what we're talking about right now are some of the things that we could actually come in and assist you with if you aren't comfortable looking at your own system as well. So when we come in and view your facility, we'll look at those, um, those supply and return vents if you have HVAC. We'll also go into the bathrooms and see if those localized exhausts that Daniel talked about are actually working because sometimes we forget that we have to maintain them or they get dirty and they stop actually pulling air outside of the building. And one way you can tell if it's doing that is actually doing a tissue test. So if you take a piece of tissue or a piece of toilet paper, some really light paper and hold it up to that vent, it'll pull the tissue back like you can see in this picture. And that's just another way to double check to see if you're getting that dilution necessary to help keep the air inside your space clean. Beyond that, there are some easy modifications you can make just on your own independently. Um, one of them being if you can open a window, as Daniel said, just opening it a little crack can help a lot with dilution. Um, and we do want to make sure that you're thinking about temperature and air quality. We know it can get expensive with heating bills and with the change in weather. And we also know that for some people, just because of environmental circumstances or where you're located, it can also be difficult because maybe you are by a freeway and that outside air isn't actually as clean as the indoor air. So those are some things that we wanna think about as we're making these recommendations. Beyond that, if you have an HVAC or a wall unit, if you can adjust the damper to increase the amount of outside air coming into the building. And lastly, we wanna talk about increasing filtration. And that's what one of our program's primary goals is with our HEPA units that we're distributing to you all. So adding portable HEPA filtration units, which some are available for less than $200, some less than $100. Um, we wanna make sure that these are accredited and um, approved. So either by AHAM or the California Air Resources Board, which is called CARB for short. Um, we want to also make sure that these units are properly sized to the room that they're going to be in. And that will be the clean air delivery rate to ensure that you're getting that amount of air turnover that actually makes the room safer to be in. And it should also be one of the considerations that we'll make when talking about these units is where we're going to put them. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. So as you can see in this diagram, this is what the units that we will hand out will look like. It's a Winix air purifier, and it has three levels of filtration. The first is the pre-filter. This will stay in the machine forever. All you have to do is vacuum it every two to three weeks. That'll catch the really big particles in the air. So if you have an animal in the space, it would catch dander and um, fur and things like that and larger particles of dust. There's also an carbon filter right here, this black one, and that will actually capture volatile organic compounds, which to put more simply are those things that you can really smell like when you're peeling an orange and things like that. And then behind that is the true HEPA filter, which is really important for the reducing the spread of COVID-19 and making your safe more space than it is. So that filter is small enough that those um, particles that the virus are on will actually get stuck in there. And since we know that COVID has kind of a lipid layer outside. It's like a fat. It's just like when you get a grease stain on your clothing, it won't be resuspended if you move it or anything because it'll just kind of stick on there. 
So as I said earlier, we're going to talk a little bit about where to place your HEPA unit once you get it. And we want you to consider some of these questions when you're thinking about that in your own space. While we can assist you and give you our best recommendation on where you should put it, we know that some of you may just be getting the HEPA unit and taking it home and just using your best judgment. So when you're thinking about that, we want to make sure you're considering where people are spending the most time. If you're in a restaurant, you have a dining room, if you're doing counter service, those kinds of areas, where will it help you the most? Maybe someone is doing a physical activity in one space, but there's just an office space somewhere else. So you want to keep it in that place where more air is being produced by people who are potentially contagious. Um, are there areas where you just can't open windows or doors? Maybe some of you have some windows and doors in your spaces and ability to ventilate, and that's great. But thinking about other parts of the room that may not get all of that airflow throughout, as well as are there spaces you can't turn on exhaust fans, um, where there are outlets or power, because these do have a cord and they will need to be plugged in. And also, is there enough space for you to keep it about a foot away from any wall or object, as well as electronics, just to make sure it has that ample room around the machine to actually be able to capture the air in the space and put it back out. Um, other considerations that you can make if you don't want to go through the rest of the process with us or if you're looking for a low cost way to clean your air is box fan filters. So this is just a box fan with a HEPA or a MERV 13 filter attached to the back of it. And they're really easy to make. And we also have DIYs and can advise you on those. The only thing about these is that they do have some safety considerations with overheating. So you may need to, for instance, turn it on every 30 minutes and then turn it off for 15 minutes to let it cool down. So they're a little more hands-on than the actual HEPA units that will be distributing. And one last consideration that we want to bring up to you all, since many of you were here at the beginning, we were all being told to put plexiglass up everywhere to keep barriers between people. Um, but as we know, the science changes, we discover new things. And what we've been talking about recently is when we're talking about good filtration and good ventilation, having the ability for all of these particles in the space to actually be able to move down be moved out of the space if you do have those windows or if you do have those additional units inside. So what we know is that a uh, ill person would be producing these aerosols that float around and sit, can stay active in the space for upwards of a few hours, um, as well as these larger aerosols and some droplets. But when we're talking about opening a window, we know the airflow kind of flows like water. So it's not just going to go through the barrier if you have one up. It may go around it and we can get this pocket of dead air inside. Um, so as you're considering other adjustments that you can make to your space to improve the safety, we may actually recommend taking those plexiglass barriers down. While we know that they're kind of a visual sign of safety and they make us all feel a little more comfortable, we want us all to actually be safe and to know that the barriers that we're putting up and the precautions that we're taking are actually helping us and not potentially hindering us by keeping virus trapped in small pockets of air. And yeah, um, so I believe lastly, we have some resources for you to go over. Um, one of the resources is in fact us. Daniel, Rhoda, myself, even too, sometimes we go out and actually do indoor air quality assessments. That's what this whole program is about, to let you all know ways that you can make your buildings more safe, to increase the awareness of indoor air issues and management for priority sectors in the county, to identify and reduce language, financial, and other resource barriers to you all, um, to reduce COVID-19 transmission, as well as providing material support to high need sectors and personnel with, I, uh, with IAQ concerns in preventing COVID-19 transmission. Um, and we just want to do one more reminder in case you join the meeting late that we do have this Microsoft form and you must fill it out in order to get your free HEPA unit. Um, so I will just go back down and paste that again in the chat for those of you who may have joined us later just to make sure that we can assist you in that way. And please don't forget to put webinar along with the date in question 12. And lastly, we'll have some, oh yeah. Go ahead, too. Thank, thank you, Jenna. I also wanted to add in that um, when you, um, after you complete the information on the intake form, um, just make sure that you attended, that you put down that you attended the webinar for today's um, webinar. And also, um, you um, see, 
we, and then once we get your information, we will email you details on when and where to pick up your free HEPA air cleaner. And right now we have the next pickup event is scheduled to be on the 22nd of December. And if you can't make it to that event, uh, then uh, feel free to email me. Um, and then I can um, send you the information on the next pickup event, or we can make, make arrangements on how to, for you to pick up your, uh, your, your HEPA air cleaner. And the other thing I wanted to point out is when you do go pick up your, your free HEPA air cleaner, um, if you do end up um, going there and, and if you decide you want to do a site assessment with our, t our technical assistance team, uh, you may be eligible to receive more, more than one HEPA air cleaner. Uh, the only thing you would have to do is attend the event or attend the pickup event and then um, do an assessment with the TA team. And if you, when you do come, it would be helpful if you could provide square footage of your space at the time of the assessment. So that way from the assessment, we can kind of determine how big your space is and how many HEPA air cleaners you may need. So depending if you're eligible or not, you could uh, you receive more than one, more than, more than one HEPA air cleaner. Um, and then, so please remember to uh, put your information on the intake form and then we'll contact you on where and when to pick up uh, your HEPA air cleaner. So we have some resources and information for you there on, uh, on the screen there. And if all else fails, if you have any questions, uh, you can email me. My name is Tu Bui at kingcounty.gov um, or IAQ info at King County. The other thing that's available is Daniel, Rhoda, or Jenna, they could also do a phone assessment with you if that's something that you like to do. And an option is to be able to, if you really want someone to come out, take a look at your facility, they would be able to schedule that visit with you um, to visit your, visit your, your workplace. Um, at this time, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to um, ask it. Hi to uh, Larry Artman. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thanks. So I've got a question about uh, mask requirements. So I've got uh, a restaurant and I've got three HVAC units. One HVAC unit solely dedicated to the kitchen. There's no public access. I've got three hood vents back there in the kitchen and reading the state and the county regulations, it appears that my vaccinated folks should be able to work without masks. Can you comment on that? You would need to check on the LNI regulations also. Uh, I know that if you have face-to-face um, -face interaction with, your, with the public, then your employees would need to wear it. But if they don't have interaction, with the with uh, the public, then you may, and it depends on the LNI regulations. And I can send you that link. I would appreciate that because okay. we had that brief window of several weeks where the state uh, regulations allowed people to unmask in alignment with the county before we got locked down again. Uh, just my my vaccinated workers who wear glasses are continuously fogging their glasses. And uh, uh, many of them will choose to keep masks on all the time, but some of them are just looking for relief. And I said, I would ask the question. Yeah, and it also has to do with um, if your employees are fully vaccinated. Um, and so we can, can provide you more information on that, but we're more like, uh, we're, we don't govern the vaccine aspect of it. Uh, the mask, the other thing is you, you want to verify to make sure that all your employees are all vac fully vaccinated. That's the big part with the LNI regulation. So if you put in your, um, your email or contact information, I can provide that information for you. Okay, no, I've got the LNI stuff. I'll, okay. re I'll reach yeah. out to them directly. That, uh, that helps clarify. And then for me, I had signed up for the HEPA filter before doing the webinar. So I didn't put that I attended. Uh, and there oh, may okay. be others in that category. Okay, so um, 
so if you could put your name in the chat there, I'll put, I'll, I'll write down your name, Larry Artman, that, and what's your business, or, well, you can email me, <laughs> email me and let me know your business, the name of your business, I know. Absolutely. Thank you. My pleasure. Um, so Robin Kelly had a question about their office having a door that opens into another office. Would we want to close the door to make the unit more effective? So the answer could vary. I would generally say yes, because these units are able to handle up to 360 square feet. So if that's the space that you're really concerned about, then maybe shutting that door would make it more effective in that space. Um, but it really depends on your goals within that whole office building. Um, if not many people are going into the office, maybe you would want to put it at a front desk if someone's checking in or various other concerns. So yeah. Yeah, I have a question, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the air filter you guys provide for us is enough for how many square feet? 360. Uh, if I have bigger than that, are you guys going to give us two? Um, so we can do that site assessment at the distribution event that Tu was talking about. Um, so if you come with your square footage and a floor plan of your facility, we can definitely work with you to see how many would work for your space. Okay, and uh, that is the only backup time and place we can pick up the air filter? I believe at the moment that's the only one we have scheduled for the rest of the year, we are also moving warehouses. So we're a little bit uncertain about when our next pickup event would be in January. Um, the so other thing, I, yeah, I wanted to add, and if so, if you can't make it to that particular date to pick up your, your HEPA air cleaner, um, feel free to email me and I can make arrangements with you or email you a schedule when it becomes available. Okay, and you see, guys, says 22, December 22nd, right? Yes, it's usually from 10 to t 10 to 1 o'clock. Okay, and it's and over in location? Seattle. It's in, I'll, I'll, we will email you the location, the exact address, but it's in Seattle over in the uh, kind of nearby Century Link Field over that area. Okay, so it's 22nd from 10 to 1 p.m., correct? Yes. Okay, and I couldn't make it, I emailed you. And, uh, my other question too is, uh, uh, I filled the application, I put down wipener, and that's that's it? Yep, yep. Okay, okay. And if I need to, I bring the floor plan, or like, I don't know where I bring floor plan, I'm in a big building, I don't think I have the floor plan now. At least get a, an approximate of the square footage of your business. Because okay. that way we can use those numbers to determine how many HEPA air cleaner you may need to, to clean the, the airspace. Okay. okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and on that topic of floor plan, it doesn't have to be an official one. If you can just draw the rough shape, that could be helpful or even take pictures. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I see in the chat, someone is asking about, you have two gyms, you want to pick it up for both locations. Um, if you could, on the intake form, fill out for two locations. And so we distribute the HEPA air cleaner based by per business. So if you have two business there, so two gems, so fill out two intake forms with the two different uh, address if you could. Are there any more other questions? So there is a question about posting these uh, recording on the website. And yes, we are going to post it and the website maybe next week. And uh, just stay tuned for the next newsletter and you will have more information there. Are there any more questions? Hey, two from uh, Larry Artman. Are Hi, Larry. Hi. Are y'all publicizing anything about Synexus Biodefense Systems? Uh, we have one, we love it. I was just, I didn't see anything mentioned about that as a best practice. Can you repeat that particular name again? Synexus, S-Y-N-E-X-S-I-S, -E uh, Synexus Biodefense System. They use them in hospitals. 
uh, we have one installed in our building as well. It's worth looking into and putting out there as a resource for organizations. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, oh. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, where do we get those intake forms to fill out? Um, we put the intake link onto that chat box or because or, you're on the iPhone, huh? Yeah. So you may not be able to see it. Um, I'm trying to see. Can you write this down? Write down my my email and then email and then I'll email you that intake form. OK, sounds good. I'm ready. Okay. T as in Tom, H U dot B as in boy, U I at kingcounty.gov. Where is the link? Is, I is that all see. is that all lowercase? Yeah. Yep. Let me just read it back one more time. Okay. T T H U dot B U I at kingcounty.com. Dot gov. G O V. Dot dot gov. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so where is the uh, link? I don't see any. It should be in the chat box. Chat box. I sent it again. So if you look at I the, see. yeah. Um, uh, they're going to send us confirmation email when we fill the form because I already filled the form. I filled first one without putting Webner, but I did it second time with Webner, but I didn't receive any email to confirm. I already submitted or once they say submitted, that's where good. Yeah, so after today, give us a few days for us to respond back to uh, when we respond to the intake form. Just there's only four of us, and um, and so we'll we do what we can, but we will get to you hopefully by within one week. And if you don't get it, email me. You have my email thu.bui at kingcounty.gov, and just say that you know you attended the webinar and you're looking for information on, on the pickup event. So we're going to be, we'll send the email information out for the pickup uh, sometime uh, next week at the latest. Can you, can you put your email in the chat, please? I got it too. Okay, thank you. But it's on the screen there also. I don't, if you can see it. I know for some of you, you may not be able to see it. And also, if you go to your newsletter that we send every week, every other week now, you will find the email that it's um, IAQ info at kingcounty.gov. You can also use that email for any questions or about the HIPAA units. You have it in the email that you receive. Um, so we also have a question that I got in the chat asking if we have multiple stores, can we get one filter for each store? And I believe the answer is yes to correct me if I'm wrong, but it would also be easier if you filled out the intake form for every store because of our distribution process. Yes, correct, Jenna. It's similar to that question that we had regarding to two gyms. So if you have uh, more than one business, fill, uh, fill out the intake form, uh, put down that your contact information, but fill out for each business. And each business has a different address. So that way we know, because the way that we have our acknowledgement is that it's only for one per business, per business address. And going back to the Synexis that was recommended. Um, so we do not necessarily recommend items to add on to HVAC systems that would put in some other. So this specific um, technology adds dry hydrogen peroxide to the air. And we don't recommend adding things to systems that would potentially put more pollutants in the air if it were to have a reaction with something else already present. Um, so what we recommend is just having your HVAC filters upgrade to MERV 13 or higher, having your HVAC regular maintained, which includes replacing the filters 
um, regularly as well as making sure it's cleaned and functioning properly. Um, and the only other thing that we would recommend similar to this is upper room uh, ultraviolet irradi irradiation, which is something for buildings that have ceilings that are very tall. And that is a unit that has a UV light at the very top of the room and will help kill germs up there. But beside that, we are not currently recommending any other additional technology to go in HVAC systems. I also wanted to add that if you're a restaurant and you go to the pickup event to pick up your free HEPA air cleaner, you are also eligible for um, personal uh, protective equipment as well. Another quick question. Many businesses are abandoning the plexiglass. Uh, is that, I, I would try to find, is that required now? Is it recommended? And I can't find anything. Can we, can we ditch the plexiglass? Yes. I think on one of the, the slides that Jenna was talking about with the plexiglass there, we are moving away from the plexiglass, just that from, from the information that we know about indoor air quality. Uh, and we do recommend people not to use the, the plexiglass be, because it becomes a barrier to um, air movement. And so we want to do, we want to move the air in and out. And so by having that plexiglass, it blocks certain, you know, air movement, but it also causes um, aerosols to kind of get suspended in the air. Um, so, which is not something that we want to do. So when we, if we do go out and, and do an assessment at your facility, if we see those plexiglass barriers, we usually recommend that you take them down. Good to know, thank you. One, one other question, uh, can we take the uh, floor decals off for the, the social distancing? Uh, we, we have them almost everywhere from uh, pre-vaccine days and, and I've seen a variety of approaches, but I haven't seen a recommendation at the, at the county or state level. It's not a requirement, but again, there is that picture that you saw with the cheese layer. So we, we continue to recommend you to use the cheese layer, which is the layer of protection. Um, you know, wearing your mask, keeping uh, social distance. And I think that's what you're talking about is that X floor marking to remind people to social distance. Uh, you can take it off, but I mean, if you, we still recommend people to, to social distance, uh, you know, with the layering, uh, opening windows and provi providing more ventilation. There it is. Um, and then the next solution is the HEPA air cleaner. So by doing all these different things that you can do, it will drastically reduce um, transmission of COVID uh, within your workplace. Gotcha. I was considering the restaurant dining room environment where everyone's either shown their card or proof of a negative test. Uh, and, and so you, my, my takeaway is there's no social distancing requirement in the dining room. Guests can sit next to each other because they met the standard to come in and, and sit down. Is that correct? I believe they were still required to wear the mask inside. Um, and then I believe they are still, uh, when you're sitting down and actively eating and drinking, then you can take off your mask. Yes, but my point being is you're not socially distant from one seat. Yeah, the there, there was no requirement on that currently. They've kind of sort of changed the guidance on that. Wonderful. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Much appreciated.